Hey you guys, happy Saturday. I mean, it's my Friday, but it's your Saturday. <sighs> I'm leaving the library. I keep on trying to find this book called Kid Power that I read when I was a little kid. But I was in like the juvenile fiction, which is not young at all. It's like middle grade. And I found these two books. One is called The Trap by Stephen Anson. Leaving your body is easy. Getting back is where the trouble starts. I sometimes like reading middle grade because it's real quick. You can like read it in like an hour or two, a couple hours. And they are really, some of them are great books. And then the last one I got was The Last Fifth Grade of Emerson Elementary. And um, it's all told in poems. There's a quote on the back here by Eileen Spinelli. I wonder if she's related to Jerry Spinelli. Have you guys read any of the Jerry Spinelli books? This is all poems. How adorable is that? Um, Jerry Spinelli wrote Stargirl. I love those books. Stargirl. Love Stargirl. So it is Carb Day in Indianapolis. And no... I'm drinking my coconut drink. No, that does not mean stuffing mashed potatoes and bread and all that kind of stuff. It means it is Carburation Day. Miller Lite Carburation Day. And um, that means it's the last day for the race car drivers to practice before the Indy 500. But really, it's kind of like a local holiday. Like, everybody that's over 21, I, I'm not even lying to you, takes the day off and um, goes there. It's like $30 for a ticket. I looked, and the band that's playing is Steve Miller Band. This is so funny to me. The, the headliner is Steve Miller Band, and then um, opening for them is Bare Naked Ladies. If you guys have never been to the racetrack in Indianapolis, like, I can't even explain it to you. It's like, I, I feel like every, like, when I go out of town and people are like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, Indianapolis. They're like, oh, the Indianapolis 500. And it's like, the racetrack is not really consistent with what Indiana is. I don't know how to say it any better than that, but, or Indianapolis is like, first of all, the, the racetrack, the Indy Spe Indianapolis Speedway is massive, okay? I mean, like, I can't even explain it to you. There's like a golf course inside the Speedway and um, the racetrack is just massive. And um, so I, I have so many friends that go. I've gone one year. Um, Alex goes typically every year. But he doesn't go for the race. He goes for the snake pit. And the snake pit is like in the middle, kind of, of the racetrack. Well, the golf course is in the middle, but it's kind of like in the middle off to the left of the racetrack. And um, when I was growing up, the snake pit was like bikers and like women in like, you know, like, what do you call it? Tube tops. It was like party central and bands and stuff like that. And that's where they all hung out. And kind of scary a little bit, right? Although that's exactly who I ended up follow, like hanging out with when I followed the Grateful Dead, which is so funny. And became some of my grateful, the grateful friends, some of my greatest friends. But um, now it's like this huge electronic dance music thing. And they send, spend massive amounts of money. Like, okay, this year they hired, or they, I, this is who's playing this year. They hired. Well, they did hire him, I guess. But um, Marshmallow, Zed, and I can't remember who the third person is. But, like, huge DJs. Martin Garrix played last year. Um, and so, like, it is, like, party central in that area. And I went one year. And the thing is, is that you have to get up super early for the race. Like, the whole thing starts at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning. And then you have, like, maybe 9 o'clock. And you have to, like, get there early. And, um, like, from the parking... The parking is impossible to find. Impossible to find, okay? And then, like, you literally park, like, two miles from the entrance of the racetrack. And then once you've walked those two miles or three miles or whatever it is, five miles, then you have to walk from the entrance of the racetrack to the snake pit, okay? Which is literally, like, another two to five miles. I mean, it's... You guys, this place is massive, and then it's like 
you're, it, it, you've already left the house at like six o'clock. It's now like nine or 10. For me, I'm just exhausted. I'm like, I don't even care anymore. Well, the year that I went, I did not realize what a shit show of drunkenness it totally is, okay? I mean, it is like 22 year old kids, 21 year old kids wasted off their ass. And it is, I, I just, I don't enjoy it. It's sad to me. And, um, I mean, there were a lot of people there that were just, like, drinking beer and having fun and dancing. And, like, that's why Alex goes. We get media passes. So he interviews all the DJs. And it's a very professional day for him um, because of our website. We own a website, raanint.com, where we interview DJs and do, like, music reviews of festivals and stuff like that. So he goes for that. But the year that we went, like, he was doing all the interviews... And I was just sitting behind, like, the stage because there was really nowhere else to sit. And I had no cell reception. And it was fucking hot. It was just, it was so hot. And um, I just was miserable. And I was like, I do not want to be here. So I have decided, like, like, you know, like, people's drinking doesn't really bother me. It's not like, if, okay, I, I think people, there's a misunderstanding. Like, I don't have a problem going places where there's drinking because it makes me want to crave drinking. Like, that's not the problem. The problem is I get very irritable with people and their drinking behaviors when it, when it turns into, like, extreme drunkenness and blacking out. Like, I don't, I can't be bothered with that. It makes me very sad to watch, and it's irritating as hell. Um, and I'm sure I was irritating as hell to people when I did the same thing. So, but, uh... But, like, I don't have a problem being in those places. I just get irritable, right? And, um, but I will tell you this, because a lot of people ask me, like, oh, you can go into a bar, you can go and do this. If I have a reason to be there, you know, to hear a band or to go listen to, you know, like, I don't know, go out to dinner with friends and there's, like, a restaurant and a bar. Like, if my motives are pure and I'm not there just to hang out in a bar, then there's no reason, there's no reason why I shouldn't be there. And that was what I was taught in sobriety. But... I can tell you in my probably in my first five years to be at a place like the racetrack or to be at a place where there was extreme drinking like that or a bar would have been very dangerous for me um, because in my first couple years of sobriety, it very much was hand to mouth. You know, it very much was me just really trying to not drink. And so I think an environment like that would have totally sent me over the edge. So Alex is going with his brother and his brother's girlfriend and then her sister. And I don't know what I'm going to do on Sunday. Everybody has like barbecues and stuff on Sunday. I've been invited like two or three barbecues. So I may do that. I may just read on the front porch. Um, and then tomorrow Alex and I are hanging out for the day. We're going to look for a new bed and, um, like a new bed platform. And then tonight we have a friend of ours in town from San Francisco and Alex is going out to have dinner, drinks with her. And, um, he asked me if I wanted to go, but I do need to go to my meeting, I think. It's 4 o'clock already. Um, and then that's kind of our weekend. Yeah. So, it's been a good day so far. It's, ab it's absolutely beautiful here. It's like 83 degrees. There's very few clouds in the sky. It's always interesting on this weekend, though. Like, I mean, it is, like, I don't know what it, it, what it, I can't, I don't know how to compare it to other cities. Like, I did this in a vlog the other day, but there's just a crazy energy about the, you know, race day weekend in Indianapolis. Is that, like, Memorial Day? Oh, there's a juice bar over there. Is that, like, um, Memorial Day everywhere, or is that just Indianapolis because it's the race? And it's interesting because it's, like, all over Indianapolis, too. It's not, like, just, like, downtown. It's, like, uh, the north side where I live on the north side. And, um, so. Oh, there's my good Judy Tanya calling. Well, I will talk to you guys in just a little bit. Look, I'm going to go in here into the kennel and surprise my good Judy Tanya. She said, stop by. Well, you should know if you ask me to stop by. That means you're gonna be on my blog. Her husband's over there. Mowing the lawn. Just see him wave to me. He's so nice. I love Eric. Is she in there? Where's she at? I don't see her. Where's she at? Tommy Jean! I just stopped. 
because she was dancing and it was copyrighted music. Don't and she love should, it so much. She <laughs> don't love it so much. Look at your hair, dude. It's crazy. It's carb day. I see you on the carb. Have you ever gone to carb day? I used to live at the track. You used to live at the track. This week. Did you wear tube tops? Hell no, I wore a bikini. You were bikini. Oh, bikini and jean shorts. That's kind of the yeah, worst. Yeah, that's 80s. You were always eating an apple. Look at all this dog food. You, Rachel. What about me? You want to be on my vlog, Rachel? Do I look okay? Yes, it's fine. Yes, what do you want to know? Oh, there's Brooke. Hi. 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 How are you? What do you want to know? Yes. What do I want to know? Yes. How is it We're working for now. Tanya? <laughs> Tr tell the truth. How is it working for Tanya? It's amazing. No, you have to be honest. I love Tanya. We get flashed a few times, but it's pretty good. You get flashed? <laughs> <laughs> On our lawnmower. <laughs> They're mean to Tanya all the time. Dear no. Whatever. They're so mean to Tanya. We're the nicest ones here. There's only three of you that work here. Four. Four now. <laughs> oh, that's a good view. I like that. Hello, how can I help you today? Really? Oh, let me just put that in right now. Okay, we'll see you then, bye. Would I be such a good worker here? Oh, were you sitting there watching me? Do you think I would be such a good worker here? Yes. What are you eating? Tanya's <laughs> Do you remember when Tanya used to bring you good food like donuts and stuff? Oh, Tanya brings me healthy food all the time. Why are you hiding behind the door? You're being so corny. <laughs> Your husband's over there mowing the lawn. I know, thank you. Ooh, I'm shooting from here with a 12 gauge shotgun. I just did a whole video on TV psychics. Oh my gosh, Peter. This my is... favorite TV psychics and my least favorite. I've been watching that one you don't like. Who? So Peter does these psychic readings and they're called Hope of the Horrible. <laughs> and this, this lady's like, Am I gonna get rich? He goes, no girl, you pour as a torch in my church mouth. Whose sunglasses are these? Mine. Are those the Quay ones? No, but I do have a pair and those are cheap from Meyer. Alex? These are cute. Alex wears those, he loves them. Oh my god. Will you text Alex right now? They don't have any that you would like, but I just don't have them. They don't have the gold? Uh-uh. They only get one of each pair, and he's not there today anyway. Okay, so uh, who's your favorite TV psychic? No, I'm not a meeting by far. Not that. What's the definition that of makes sense, girl? Well, I mean, Who says does that make sense? A one girl that you love. Monica the medium? I just talked about her. Now you want to need, now you want to hear imitation? <laughs> the hopeless one? No. So do you know how my husband died? In water. <laughs> in water? But he was in 9-11. Yeah, he died in water. Firefighter wolves. Monta. Sylvia Brown was the biggest fake in the world. Montel, Michael Jackson's gonna live to be 105. And he'll be making music with Whitney Houston. My spirit guide Anita told me. She's an old, old She smoked like 15 packs a day. I used to paint my nails in high school with white out. Did it work? Yeah, have you never done it? No, I can't say Do you get pedicures? I get pedicures sometimes. No, he's too big of a one to get fed. That's not true. Do you laugh the whole time? Everyone's always no. having a feet. speak. They always cut his feet every time they get oh. they cut his feet. Incoming call. Come on, Tanya. Okay, I'm gonna call. Yeah. Oh. Come on, it, it's Tanya's mom, so we she said I can't do that today. <laughs> what are you girls doing this weekend for race day weekend? Working here. Uh, working? Tanya should give you the weekend off. Who else is going to work? Yeah. Remember you said there's three of us? This is two. Good Lord's plate, yes. Ashley. She used to work with you. And Amanda's new. Mm -hmm. Is that the fourth? Megan. Oh, Megan. That's five. She can't work. Nick. Why can't Megan work? Megan. I'll Tanya fire her? Mm -hmm. Tanya, are you firing people? No. All right. She, she rehires people after she's fired. I know. People quit on Tanya like 15 <laughs> Ten times. Ten years later, they're back. You know who. We won't speak of her. 
that person's dog could walk in here and Tanya would hire a back like that. Which like, oh girl, I missed you. Who's that person? Oh. <laughs> Laura. Oh. Short five years. Is that crazy? That is crazy. I don't mess around that But she's trying to steal my business. <laughs> Yeah, With her ex-girlfriend that's now married to somebody else. Oh, I'm Tanya, though, I, this is a funny story to hear this. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to tell on Tanya for a second. Are these my glasses? That'd be nice. So, Tanya, you can't say who this is or anything about her, okay? But Tanya had a situation where her computer got broken. <laughs> girl was watching porn on Tanya's computer. Shut down two computers. Shut down two computers. Not the girl I was just talking about, a different girl. I wonder what sites she was going to have to do that. Girl, sites you wouldn't want. Sites you wouldn't want. Yeah. Did you break your phone? Is that just No, it's the screen. And those things are like $40, so I don't want to Is have it to glass? One of those glass screen connectors? Uh-huh. When are you bringing your doggies back? Um, the end of June, we're going to Mexico. Oh. My sister just moved to Hilton Head, so I'm going to You guys all travel so much at living here. Because we work so much, we pay for it. <laughs> you went to Harry Potter World, didn't you? Three times. Three times? Have you had the Butterbeer? Uh, yeah. Is it totally worth it? Oh my gosh. Is Harry Potter World really that cool? Have you seen what they did to go there? No, what they, they did to go there. They actually have the actual train. <clears throat> oh, do they really? Like that goes from Park. Now listen, I'm only on the second book, so don't worry about it for me. Have you seen the movie yet? Just the first one. I'm reading the book and then I'm watching the movies. Peter, you're missing out on life. Pretty Brooke, I'm reading the book <laughs> and then I'm watching the movies. Okay, that's understandable. But you need to go there. Because you're going to turn into a little child. Huh? You're, single. you're single right now. No. You're back? Mm-hmm. No. I was going to try to get Brooke a boyfriend. <laughs> but she's got a boyfriend. <laughs> I should give a little shout out to my ex. Who's your ex? Piece of shit. We'll give, a, we'll give a shout out to Piece of Shit, who's all of our exes. <laughs> no, my ex is okay. He's fine. <laughs> Look at Tanya son when he was little. Oh, my lord, little Nick. Look at that. He's a Marine now. Okay, well, I'm going to get off here and go visit with my good Judy. So I'll see you guys later. Say bye, Rachel. Bye. Rachel, you're single, aren't you? Yeah. are ready to meet them. Whoa, wait, she's getting real quiet. She's coming over here to say, are you dating somebody? No. Ain't nobody got time for that. I think you have a crush on somebody. Mm-hmm. I think you have a crush on somebody. Is that Nick? Yeah. No way. <laughs> We're going to get off here now. <laughs> bye. Say bye. bye. Okay, I'm home. Can I tell you what is so funny? Is that I am like so incredibly relaxed, which I typically am relaxed, although my head hurts. So I'm gonna take some leave because it feels like it's gonna pour down rain. But, um. I was like, what's that sound? But I think it's the uh, air conditioning coming on. But I, um. I am so incredibly relaxed, and Alex is still at work, and so he's coming home, and he's going out with a girlfriend tonight, and then we're hanging out tomorrow together, so I was like, I have really nothing to do tonight, honestly. Tony was like, I'm going to have a fire, I'm about to make some pink lemonade, to just have around for the weekend. But then I'm also going to, because Tanya gave me this thing from David's Tea. And I was sent all these amazing teas from David's Tea. I cannot remember who sent it to me. Anita. Anita sent it to me. So I was like, I'm going to make some tea and sit out in my tea kettle and sit out on the front porch and drink tea and read a book because I have nothing to do right now. And you guys, I literally... Like, people are like, how do you get so much stuff in a day? I just feel very, very driven to just keep on working, keep on working, keep on working. And, um, because I love it. I love being busy. And it's really actually very hard for me to 
to not do anything. So I am, um, here we'll do a little tutorial as I go with the tea. But I'm super excited because I'm just going to sit and read. I've got to go through those books because there's too many books on our countertop right now. Um, but I'm just going to sit and read. Yeah. And just enjoy my weekend. I mean, why shouldn't I, right? And I have, like, literally nothing to do except for make videos, which I love to do. So it's super exciting that all I have to do is make videos. Now, I could clean, which I probably will do. Um, but I don't even have that much cleaning to do. Our house is always pretty clean. Um, I can never remember how many of these to put in here, to be honest with you. I bought two of these Crystal Light. We like pink lemonade. And Alex will, Alex, Alex, sound like Sean Connery, will actually, oh lord, will actually drink some of this. Is it two or is it four? I can never remember. Add two quarts, eight cups. You guys want to know what an idiot I am? That can't be right. One gallon is four quarts. Two quarts. I don't know, honestly. I don't remember how many of these to put in here. Well, we'll do this and then I'll see. You guys, this is where I'm like so bad at math, okay? So if it says to put two quarts, which is eight cups, one container for two quarts. So I would need four of these. That can't be right. That can't be right. I think it's two. I'm such an idiot. This is why, you guys wonder why I don't cook. This is why I don't cook. Um, so I'm going to make the tea, I'm going to sit on the front porch, I'm going to sit on the front porch, and, and yeah, and now I'm going to read, see? Um, I'm going to sit on my front porch and read. Although it's so hot, I don't know that I really want hot tea, but it does kind of sound good. Okay, let's try this dude out and see. Can somebody remind me the next time when I do this of how many I need? with you. Is that horrible? I think I'm going to put three in and fill it up. Do you guys make lemonade at home? Now it looks like too much. Did you ever see the movie Crimes of the Heart? When Babe is making lemonade in the kitchen, she goes, has him try it, and it's like so tart. Jessica Lang can't even drink it. She goes, how does it taste? Is there enough sugar in there? She goes, I like more sugar. I'm putting more sugar on mine. I love that movie. I like more sugar. I'm going to put more sugar on mine. You guys are probably like, how do you ever sit still long enough to watch a movie? But I do. It's truth of nature. Okay. Clean up as you go. That's what my mom taught me. That's why the kitchen's always clean. Okay. I don't really care for this fortune cookie anymore. I throw that away. And. There's just some. 
something about drinking tea or coffee while sitting outside. Little babies need some water too, they say. Now Tanya told me this thing, she's like, I bought ice bag. She's like, I spent eighty dollars at that David's tea and I don't even know how to do it. I was like, well how did you what do you mean you don't know how to do it? She's like, it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna see the different kinds of tea I have. Chocolate covered almond. Pick me up. Tea Romaton. I think that might be a good one. Coco Colada. That sounds good. Fruit Infusion. That's like for iced tea. Joey sent me a bunch too. Sugar Water. That's for iced tea. Buddha Blend. White tea. Jasmine cream brulee. Oh, that sounds really good. Actually, the orange spice one sounds good. I can't decide. So pretty. There's one that Anita said she didn't like. I can't remember which one it is. Sleigh Ride. Perfect name for the middle of June or May. Let's do that. I don't know why I think that's so cute, but I do. Okay. So what you do is, can you guys see here? I'll put it over there. I have never been to a David's Tea in my entire life. We'll let that thing just, but it has a little thing in here where you put the tea in the very bottom. Tony just literally, she bought this, never used it. She said you can have it. And I think it's so interesting because all these David Teas, Anita sent me. Thank you, Anita. That was so awesome. Oh no. This is a tea bag. None of these are tea bags, and this is a tea bag. So I'm gonna save that. How do you know which ones are not tea bags? Let's go with the pick me up. That'll put me right to sleep. Oh, it smells so good. Okay. So we're gonna go with the pick me up. Be careful. People thought I was so foolish when I asked for that water thing, that tea, the tea kettle. I use it so much, you guys, I can't even tell you. Cause I drink so much tea. I love it. Kind of hard to get it all in here evenly. Tony went to this David's tea and she was like, I like the guy so much. She's like, he reminded me so much of you, so I bought all this stuff. I was like, you bought it because he reminded you of me. Why didn't you call me up on the phone, girl? Tony buys shit she does not need all the time. Like any of those as you see things on TV, she buys, she has to have. Like how to turn cauliflower into pasta and all that kind of stuff. She just has to have it. Okay, so then when you're done, I guess you put this little thing on it. <gasps> Did I do it right? Oh my God, if this works out, I will be so excited. Do you guys even see this? This is fantastic. I kind of feel like maybe I put too much water on it. <gasps> oh! It started dripping out of the bottom. Well, if worst comes to worst, I can just use that open, <laughs> the open tea bag, right? If it doesn't work. I kind of feel like I did something wrong. I don't know. It's kind of like not doing so much. I feel like it should be doing more right away, don't you? If you guys have one of these, can you tell me if I did it wrong? What's the secret? Okay, 
here, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. While that's waiting, since I have hot water anyway. I'm gonna have the sleigh one, sleigh ride. Oh my God, it smells so good, you guys. It literally smells like Christmas. Have you guys heard of this David's Tea? If you haven't, I will link it below. I guess I need to go in. We have one right around the corner from us. Can somebody tell me what I did wrong with this? I am not, this is not working. What did I do wrong? I have a feeling I'm supposed to like, it's supposed to go the other way in there. Is that the deal? Peter, why are you such an idiot? No, but that wouldn't work. I just wasted all of this tea. Damn it. So this is what you do when you're an idiot like me. That tea is all wet, so I must have been doing it right. So I have this little teacup thing that goes like this. These are all the things you need to have if you're a tea person, okay? I'm just saying. So I'm gonna scoop, it's all, all that tea is wet. So what did I do wrong, you guys? Can somebody please tell me? I guess I could just get online and look at it, couldn't I? Ugh, what a mess. So I put that tea in here. See, because I'm not going to waste tea. And then you pour it over. Good thing I made so much water. This is the coolest little contraption. People love this when they come over. I'm like, do you want a cup of tea? You can make loose leaf tea in there. And then I have a set of them. So then what you do is you just let the tea steep for like 10 minutes, 5 minutes. And then when you're done, you take this little metal thing out. And it's just like a cup of tea. Isn't that the coolest thing in the entire world? Should we try this? That sleigh ride is really good. And I'll be really honest with you. I do not love... I, I, I used to put honey... Do I have any honey in here? I think I have some honey in my tea maybe today. Or don't have any honey, of course. Um, if you have never tried it, coconut oil melted in your honey is really good. Um... But I don't usually put anything, but I think I am going to put a little bit of equal in that today because I just want it to be a little sweet. Back in the day, I used to put honey and milk. And I don't drink milk. Milk. I'm going to say it with a... I don't drink milk. Well, that cleaned out really easily. Okay, so this must be what you do. The water must go through there, and then you must, like, push it down like this to put it, oh, to pour it. But that wouldn't make any sense because you pour it this way. Do you see this contraption? Like, because when you push it here, all the water comes out. So can somebody please tell me what to do with that, or I will Google it or something and figure it out. Because I want to use it. But anyway, I don't, a lot of times I just drink like the K-cups of tea. This vlog is gonna be so long today. Sometimes I just drink the K-cups of tea, clean as you go, clean as you go, my mother always taught me. And that's how your house will stay clean. So anyway, um, but I don't love the K-cups, but like if you want a cup of like Sleepy Time tea or like the Starbucks Zen, I think it's Tezo, which are not my favorites, but no peepees. Visited that same piece of string on the floor for about three days now, thinking it's a treat. It's not. But anyway, these are the kinds of things people talk about local art that, like, I love when people give me. Like, so I think my stepmother gave me this plate that she made, and somebody else gave me this, and we keep a candle on it because I just like the bohemian life, the artsy life. Okay. Well, while my tea is steeping. I am going to go outside and drink my sleigh ride brain. Are you listening? 
That looks really good, doesn't it? I know a lot of people leave their tea bags in there, but they just annoy the shit out of me. So I take my tea bags out. So I'm, you should make a cup of tea tonight, and you should read on your front porch because why not? Like life is short. So, all right, you guys. I will see you in a little bit. So people asked to see <laughs> our front walk that Fufu and Jesse did. So I thought I would show you guys. Here is the front walk. And it goes over to our driveway. Isn't that so exciting? They did a wonderful job, didn't they? So anyway, I'm very happy. And this is my view when I sit out here. But I don't know that I think the neighbors would want you to see their house, so I'm not gonna show you the neighbor's house. And this is our walkway in there. Over here is ours, and over here is ours, and we have like a walkway in the middle of our house. That makes sense. So I'm getting ready to go meet my husband for dinner. He called, and he was like, do you wanna go and eat dinner? So we're gonna go eat dinner on Fridays, which we never go to Fridays. Thank God it's Friday. I don't look very good, but I just, oh, I threw the tea out. I totally <laughs> was just showing this because I wanted to show you that the tea looks like, like pink Chardonnay or Zinfandel or whatever that is. I don't drink, I don't know, but it looks like wine and it was so good. So if you go to do, whew, I'm out of breath and taking the dogs out and put them in their house. Um, if you go to David's Tea, get the Sleigh Bell one. It's really good. And I haven't tried this other one, so I should try it right now, shouldn't I? Oh, that's really good, too. Oh, that's really good. Mmm, that's spicy. Pick me up. I really like that one. Well, I'll warm it up later and drink it. So anyway, yeah, I'm getting ready to go to eat. I'm hungry. I was going to do an eating show tonight, but I'm going to go eat with my husband instead. <laughs> Bye. So it's the end of the night, and I just went and got a bottle of water because I'm gonna listen to my audiobook a little bit. I literally lay down at like nine o'clock and crashed until like one o'clock in the morning. And Alex had plans to go out tonight, but his plans fell through, which had I known that, I would have said, you know, like, let's do something, but we went out to dinner at Friday's we both got cheeseburgers, that was fun. I haven't been to Fridays in forever, it was packed. On a Friday, Fridays on a Friday. And, yeah. Then we came home and my plan was to do a live stream tonight, but I didn't because I was so tired. <clears throat> and I totally crashed and fell asleep. And, um, So my night did not turn out the way that I thought it would as far as <laughs> relaxing and all of that stuff. I guess I was more tired than I thought I was. Would be. Has ever happened to you? So I'm not gonna talk on here forever because I have a lot of footage from earlier in the day. And uh, But I just kind of wanted to wrap up the day a little bit. I had the most wonderful nap. I slept so well. And I woke up and Boo Radley was right next to me. <laughs> he had like come up sometime during the, my nap and lay down next to me. This little face in the wind. Oh my God, I just watched, Alex had sent me this trailer to the movie. It's with Mandy, Mandy Moore. She looks so good still. Um, and it's called 37 Meters Down or 47 Meters Down or whatever. Have you guys seen the trailer for this? It's a shark movie. It looks terrifying. You guys know that sharks are my biggest fear. If you didn't know that, now you know. Sharks are my biggest fear. And um, so I was watching this trailer and I was like, oh my God, this is terrifying. So you should go check it out. It's either 37 or 47. Oh, if I had a stop, stop light, I'll look on my phone. Um, but 
the trailer makes it look really good. I don't know when it comes out. I didn't even look to see when it comes out. It looks like a summer movie, though, because they, like, go on... It varies. It's somewhat kind of reminds me a little bit of that Blake Lively movie because they, like, go on a vacation, and they're like, this is going to be the greatest vacation we ever have, and they're on this, like, beautiful beach. Shark movies either have to be done very, very well, or they're stupid. Like, did you guys ever see Open Water? Like, that was a really well-done shark movie. And, of course, all of the Jawses. I love all the Jawses. I mean, the, the end ones, like, three and four are horrible. But they're still, you have to watch them, you know? But Jaws 1 and Jaws 2, I think, are terrifying. And, um... I mean, even though, like... You know, it's... The, uh... What do you call it? Yeah. Uh, the special effects are not that great because it was done so long ago. I mean, all of that stuff is computerized now, but to think about it, like, have you guys ever watched the documentaries on Daw Jaws? Daws. The document documentaries on Jaws, they, like, built a giant shark, and then they used, like, a great white for some of the footage. And, um... But it looks real. Like, Jaws, like... I still get so scared watching that movie. And I think so much of it is the music. Shoot, I wanted to... Um, but, like, shark movies terrify me. Like, I don't even, to be really honest with you, besides, like, short Sharknado. <laughs> I do love those Sharknado movies, though. Do you guys watch those? I watch all those Sharknado movies. Melissa and I love them. Um, besides Sharknado, like, they're all very scary to me. Like, I watched this one not too long ago, and... Let me see this, what this movie is called. Um, Forty-seven Meters Down, official trailer. And I got, like, spooked sitting here in my car, like, watching it. Like, I almost couldn't, like, even just watching it in my car. I kept on, like, pulling up my feet. Do you guys do that? Whenever I watch, like, shark movies, I always, like, pull my feet up because I get, like, really scared. And, uh, uh, my jaw has not hurt for like two days and I kind of feel like maybe I was getting sick and it was like my lymph node, if that makes sense. Although I don't ever get sick, like I never get sick. I have like a crazy immune system. My mom and dad were the same, the same way. My dad like never gets sick. My mom... Like, the only time she ever got sick was she had the flu, and then the disease that she got, she got, like, following the flu. And, <clears throat> and that's how that disease works. It's like, it hits people, like, right after they get the flu. And, um, the disease that killed her. But, like, other than that, like, my mother was never sick. Like, never. Like, I don't ever remember her, like, calling and complaining about being sick or having the flu or having a cold or anything. Like, both of my parents just always are super healthy. So, when I was a little kid, though, with the shark movies, like, my dad, we had a sailboat that we kept in Saga Tech, Michigan in the summer, so we would go up there, and he would always, like, we would play in the water, and he would, like, film my cousin, and I had this, like, big, like, Betamax or VCR, like, camera that he would, like, film us on, like, we were, like, he was, like, a movie director, and then he would, like, act like, like, the big buoys that, like, are out in the middle of Lake Michigan, if you guys know what I'm talking about, that look like the one that she swims to in Jaws, he would make us, like, he'd be like, okay, you guys, like, now act like you're in Jaws, and, like, we would have to, like, act like we were getting pulled under, and he would, like, film us, because he thought it was so funny, and my cousin loved it, my cousin Carolyn, but, like, at some point in doing it, like, it would connect with me, and I'd be like, I am out here in 100 feet of water, or 200 feet of water, because Lake Michigan is, like, really deep, and I'm reinventing this shark and I would panic and I would have to get out of the water and he would be like honey what's wrong what's wrong and I'd be like dad the sharks he'd be, like, he'd be like it's Lake Michigan there are no sharks but I am not convinced of that okay see like I am, have seen enough movies I know this is crazy where sharks swim like up rivers and end up in lakes and things like that people think I'm crazy when I say that but I do believe that and there have been actual facts of that like tiger sharks that have done that but the sharks that do that are supposedly not very dangerous, but I don't know how true that is. I don't know.
supposed to rain all weekend. It's going to be interesting if they have the race. They're talking about calling the race off. They call the race off. I think they do it the following weekend. But, like, still all the parties and stuff are this weekend. But isn't that crazy? And, like, everybody's already taken off working and stuff this weekend so that they can do race day stuff. But yeah, Open Water was one of the scariest movies I ever saw. And then the one with Blake Lively. Why can't I remember what that movie is called? I actually thought that movie was really well done. Alex thought it was stupid. So many people I saw that I know thought it was stupid, but I thought it was like terrifying. You guys know which movie I'm talking about? What's that Blake Lively movie called? I'm at a stoplight, so. I'm gonna Google it. It's gonna turn green as soon as I do this. Yep. Um. Well, the Blake Lively Shark movie. What other movies do I think that are scary? There was one other one that I really thought was scary. I can see them and they're like circling. Well, and you know, like. The night of the Titanic, supposedly, they're saying that a lot of people, like, died that night. They're saying, like, it just happened yesterday. They say that a lot of people probably died of, like, shark attacks um, that were in the water that weren't either, like, frostbitten. But, like, do sharks really, like, exist in, like, that cold of water? And then, like, in um, World War II in Honolulu, when the USS Indianapolis... Did I tell you guys the story? Oh, my God. So, in the USS Indianapolis, like was attacked and like was burning and sinking all the people jumped ship it was a submarine I think yeah it was a submarine and so they were all like trying to get out well there was like all of these sharks there were all these sharks that were swarming and they like killed all of these guys and you could like hear them being like attacked by sharks supposedly and stuff like that in the water well I went to Hawaii with my dad when I was like 10 and you can go there and you can see it. Well, my grandfather was in World War II, so this was all like really interesting to my dad and he wanted to go see it. And I remember we went and saw it and you like walk over this like plexiglass thing where like the submarine is below. Like you can still like see kind of like the remains of the submarine, like part of it. And I remember like when we were standing on the, it's like this huge plexiglass like bridge kind of thing. I don't, if I'm remembering it correctly, I maybe remembering a little bit off, but I think I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, you're like standing out there in Pearl Harbor and um, like they start talking about the shark attacks and all this kind of stuff. I lost my shit. I am 10 years old. I do not like sharks. I'm terrified of them. And I was like, get me off this thing. I was so upset. So yeah, that happened. <laughs> So isn't it so funny that I'm landlocked in Indiana? But every time we go to Chicago, or go to Chicago, every time we go to Miami, we always hear shark attacks in that area, you know, or sharks in that area. And I always think that when I'm out in the ocean, I'm always like, you know, some sharks attack. Oh, that I learned this in Jaws, that most sharks attack within three, three feet of water. Did you guys know that? Or five feet of water, I think it's three feet of water. Most shark attacks occur within like three feet of water. Everything you ever needed to know about sharks, you basically can learn in Jaws 1 and Jaws 2. <laughs> and the thing is, it's so funny about this. Alex, like, always talks about this when we do videos together. Is that, like, I'm absolutely fascinated with sharks at the same time. Like, I'm terrified of them, but, like, I can't not watch the shark movies. Does that make sense? Like, I like, have, like, this obsessive fear about it, but, like, I have to watch the shark movies because they're so good. So anyway, enough talking about sharks. Now I'm going to be spooked all night long. Are you guys having a good weekend? Did you like that I like filmed kind of all over the place today? That was really fun. Well, all right, you guys. I will talk to you later. And I hope that you are having a wonderful weekend. I love you. See you tomorrow. Bye.